Good morning, welcome back to the channel. If you guys saw the last video, you'd know why we're here at Best Buy. To pick up two new propellers for the drone. They broke off as we flew it into a tree. Well, I didn't fly into a tree, but it flew itself into a tree. Even though I found those two propellers, they were totally broken. So hopefully Best Buy has the propellers that we need. We're also charging it, so we should be good to go. Let's hope. And just like that, we are back in business. Well, I mean, we have to you know install it first, but we have the part that we need. In fact, it came with two. That's exactly what we needed, so. We're good. No. That is definitely the wrong propeller. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think that's gonna work. Alright, note to self, make sure you get the right one before you walk out of the store. Just like that. In all fairness, they look exactly the same. We are back in business. Now we just need to take it for a little test drive. So cue the drone shots in three, two, one. got the drone back to life. We got that going. Doing two things today. For one, we're gonna go ahead and reattempt to tint the visor strip on the windshield. For two, we're gonna go ahead and remove that lower, that valance right there in the lower portion of the front bumper. That air deflector down there needs to come off like right, right now. It doesn't look good and all it does is rob us of our front and ground clearance and approach angle. So that's coming off first. Let's get started on the visor strip tint on the windshield and not have it look like an M on the windshield because that obviously does not look good. I never attempted to do a visor strip tint in my life, so that's probably why it ended up like this and not like this. So I'll show you guys what I did wrong. Now last time we attempted to tint the visor strip on the windshield, in my assumption, I wanted nine inches of tint, right? So I started from here to nine inches down here on the left side, as well as the right side, thinking that it had to be nine inches in the center as well. I lined up from the center of the windshield at nine inches to the side. That was actually wrong. You need to center it from left to right, wherever it lands in the middle is where it needs to be placed, whether it is five inches or six inches, I'm not sure where it will land, but wherever it ends up is where it needs to stay in the middle. And all that matters is it's nine inches on the left and the right side of the windshield. So lesson learned, and that's what life's all about. I'm honestly surprised my Vava dash cam still actually sticks at this point with how many times I've removed it for windshield tint. I feel like we're watching the exact same video from a few days ago. Now we have a rough cut of the visor tint. We're gonna measure nine inches from the top of the glass. All right, let's change the plan. Nine inches wasn't quite enough, so we're doing 10. This time around the tent came out absolutely flawless. So the mistake we made before was making it nine inches from top to bottom on the right side, the left side, as well as the middle. This dot matrix line right here was right about nine inches. So given the curve of the windshield, you need to make sure that the left side, the right side are where you want them and the middle falls wherever it's at. And that's how you get a nice, clean, perfect look. And that's what we got, so we're good. Huge shout out to Silverado Ownership 101. Link in the description below to his channel, Spencer. You have really helped me out, as well as a ton of other Silverado owners. 
who have the 19s and up. His videos are a lot more dynamic than mine, so check him out, link in the description below. This will be the last time you guys see the Silverado with that plastic piece still attached to the front bumper. This thing is going to look so, so much better without that plastic piece installed down there. Let's get to it. I'd have to say there's probably, I don't know, let's start in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess there's 12 total. That mud my eyes. Hands down, one of the easiest mods you can do to your truck to make it look 100 times better. All right, so there's a total of 12 of these bolts that have a seven mil head. 10 of them are mounted from the bottom going up, and then two are mounted from the top looking down on either side of the valance, one on each side. So all the bolts are off now. Presumably, this should just kind of come off. We'll see. That looks so much better, are you kidding me? That's incredibly different looking. Now, I'd have to say what? The shaved off probably, I don't know, two or three inches, easily, which is a huge difference. Now, these things are on our trucks for a reason. They are there to deflect the air, but it would have to be a very considerable loss of fuel economy for me to throw that ugly thing back on to my truck. I mean, just look at how much better that looks and how much better our approach angle is gonna be when off-roading. Last time I had visor tint, that was on my last truck, my GMC Canyon, and we went 5% limo up there. This time around, we did 15% to match with the front two roll-ups. I thought that'd be a much cleaner look rather than having this be limo and these be 15. Then matching, I feel like, looks a lot cleaner. So something tells me I'm probably not allowed to drive up this, but sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. I mean, I'm sure if we keep it low-key out here, no one will have anything to say to me, even though there is clearly no one out here. This is all gonna be brand new development out here at some point. I guess they're gonna be leveling this all down. This does seem like a very good place to take a couple photos for the gram. If you guys don't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'll have it linked in the description below. Mark underscore Brenner. This could be one of the last few times you see the Silverado with this wrap on it, but guys, how much better does the truck look with that plastic piece removed off the bottom of the front bumper? It looks like it just gained two inches of lift in the front. Now, speaking of that, we are getting some more suspension mods done to it in about five days or so, so stay tuned for that. We are out here just getting the perfect shot for the gram. Oh, that was a good one right there. I think this angle might be a little bit better with the sunset behind the front of the truck. I'm no professional photographer or anything, but I'd say flipping the truck around was definitely the right move. Yep. I don't have the proper tools with me today to measure the approach angle, but I can measure the ground clearance from the bottom of the bumper now, the lowest point of the front bumper to the ground with measuring tape. From the lowest point of the front bumper to the ground, which is actually beyond the front. It's a little lower back there. From there to the ground, we have 14 inches, which is actually pretty impressive. Now that plastic piece does have purpose, and it's got a lot of different names. I don't know which one exactly to refer to it as, to be honest, but that plastic piece does serve purpose. For one, it keeps the dirt and debris out from underneath your car or truck, and for two, it does deflect the air, giving your car or truck more aerodynamic efficiency. Now just to rehash, we have a two inch leveling kit in the front, nothing in the rear, we have the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. They are a 295, 60 by 20. And with that front air dam removed, that puts us right at that 14 inches of front and ground clearance. I hope you guys had an amazing, amazing New Year's Eve. Hope you guys brought in the new year properly. I myself have some goals for 2020. The first goal is to go out and adventure more, whether it be with the truck or without it. Travel more of those unbeaten paths, whether it be with the four wheel drive or without it. I wanna get out there more and adventure. Goal number two is to bring you guys more content and more consistency. I wanna bring you guys on more adventures, bring more mods to the channel, more cars or more trucks, whatever it may be that you guys would love to see. It's gonna be a good year. Make sure you guys stick around, subscribe. I will catch you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out.